Today, you'll learn how to crochet the lilac pot holder. This double thick pot holder is crocheted using two strands of worsted weight cotton yarn to make it super thick, which is perfect for keeping your counters or your kitchen table safe from like hot casserole dishes or Dutch ovens. It comes with a little hanging loop so you can hang it from a hook on your counters um, or like on your kitchen cabinets. And then it has this knit look ribbing which looks really cool. We accomplish that by using the linked double crochet stitch in the third loops. So this is all just a one stitch repeat. So once you get the hang of the stitch, it's pretty easy to make this double thick pot holder. The double thick pot holder will end up being about eight by eight inches and it's crocheted using two strands of worsted weight cotton yarn. It's easier to use two balls because if you're using dishy cotton, which is what I used, you'll need about 235 yards, which is like one and one quarter balls. So you won't be able to finish it with just one ball anyway. This color of dishy is called lilac. You can also substitute for any color or a comparable worsted weight cotton yarn. You'll need a J six millimeter crochet hook and then scissors and a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Let's go ahead and get started crocheting our double thick pot holder. So start off with your two strands of yarn and make a slip knot. Tighten it up a bit and chain 28. So I think I have 28, but I'm just going to double check. And great. So I've got my 28 chains and now I will linked double crochet across this chain. So start off by inserting your hook into the second chain. So here's one and two, and I'm just going to use the top loop of my chain. So I've inserted my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert your hook into the fourth chain. So here's three and number four is right here. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now there should be three loops on your hook and you can finish off your link double crochet just like it was a regular double crochet. So I yarn over and pulled through two loops. Now I'll yarn over and pull through two loops. For the second link double crochet and future link double crochets, we'll start off by inserting our hook into this horizontal bar on the previous stitch. So here I am inserting my hook then I'll yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I'll insert my hook into the next chain and I'll yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops and finish off that linked double crochet. So go ahead and crochet across this chain. You should have 25 linked double crochet stitches. So I'm finishing up my last couple stitches in round one. You might, you might be wondering why I'm calling it round one if so far it's just a row and you will see in a couple seconds why that is. 
we want this pot holder to be double thick, so to have two layers to make sure that your counters and tables are super safe from like hot dishes. So we are going to crochet in the round so that the pot holder will kind of fold over on itself and you'll have those two layers. And then since we're using two strands of round, or oh my gosh, two strands of yarn, <laughs> It ends up being more like quadruple thick because you've got that double thick yarn and the double thick layers. So it's double, double thick. <laughs> but anyway, we have 25 linked double crochet stitches along this, but now we're going to go back and crochet along the other end because that will give us our round. So set yourself up for your next linked double crochet. And now I'm going to insert my hook into the other side of the chain. This is a little bit tricky since you've already crocheted into the chain, so it will be more tight than usual. But yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we've got those three loops so we can finish off just like usual. So you'll keep crocheting along the other side of your chain. And when you're done, you'll have 25 linked double crochets on this side too. So it'll give you 50 total for the round. I'll catch back up with you to show you how to do the last stitch because we'll join it to the first one and it's a little bit different than what you would normally do if it was normal double crochets. Right now I'm finishing up these last couple linked double crochet stitches. So that's the end of my 49th linked double crochet. So I'm starting my 50th one, which I will join to the first stitch. So you'll start off like usual. I've pulled up a loop from that horizontal bar, and then I've inserted my hook into that last chain and pulled up a loop. But now you'll also insert your hook into the horizontal bar from the first stitch of that round. and then yarn over and you'll pull through three loops. So one, two, and three. And then yarn over to finish up. And now you're mostly joined. And you'll also be able to kind of fold this a little bit better. It'll naturally fold more as you do more rounds. So to officially finish off our join, we're going to do a slip stitch, but I like to do um, like a backward slip stitch. So insert your hook back to front into the top of the first stitch. It's a little bit tricky to do. 
and then put your working loop back on your hook, tighten it up a bit, and then use your hook to just pull through. And then from there, we can begin round two. So I'll pop that little corner back out again. And so rounds two through 13 are all gonna be exactly the same. And round 14 is super similar as well. The only difference is that we'll add a hanging loop. So once you know what you're doing, you can basically just space out as you work on this. Um, there's not a ton of like tricky counting. It's all just one stitch. So chain three to start our next round of linked double crochets. And then insert your hook into the second chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're gonna insert our hook into the third loop of the stitch from the previous row. So here we have the top of our first stitch and the third loop is actually gonna be behind it like on the inside of your project. So here we go, Is this is the third loop. Crocheting into this will push these first two loops forward and it'll give us that kind of ribbed look. And I really like how it ends up looking. So insert your hook into that third loop And it'll be, it'll feel a little bit weird until you get used to it. But yarn over, pull through two loops, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So for my second link double crochet, I'll show you all, show it all to you again. Insert your hook into that horizontal bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert your hook into the third loop. Again, it's like on the inside. Make sure you get through both strands and then yarn over, pull up a loop and just finish this off. So yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So you'll just do this link double crochets in the third loop all the way around and you'll join to the first stitch like we did before, but I'll show it to you one more time. Just so you know what to do. I only have a couple stitches left in round two. Okay, so here I am on my last stitch. So I'll start off as usual. I'll insert my hook into that horizontal bar and I'll yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I'll insert my hook into the third loop, which is kind of tricky for this last stitch. And then yarn over and pull up a loop and before I finish off, I also wanna insert my hook into the horizontal bar from the first stitch of that round. So now you'll yarn over and you'll pull through the first three loops on your hook. And then you'll yarn over and pull through those last two loops to finish off that linked double crochet. So now you can see we've got our stitch joined. And then we'll do that like backwards slip stitch. So insert your hook into the top of the first stitch, put your working loop back on your hook, and then just pull it through front to back. And now we can set ourselves up for round three. 
So you'll chain three and then you'll just do exactly what we did for round two. Rounds two through 13 on your double thick pot holder are going to be exactly the same. Round 14 will be almost exactly the same until you get to the last couple stitches. So go ahead and finish up crocheting rounds um, three through most of 14. And I'll show you what to do to finish up your double thick pot holder. So I'm on my last round, round 14, and I'm finishing up the 48th double crochet or linked double crochet. So now I'm going to add my little hanging loop. The reason that you see this drift right here is because we didn't turn our rounds. So we joined them, but they're not turned. So with each row or round, you can see that it drifts a little bit further into the back of our double thicked pot holder. So that's why we want to put our loop a couple stitches before the end, just to make sure it's really in the corner. So to do the hanging loop, just chain 15. So there's 15. You could definitely chain more or less if you want to change the size of your loop. And then just insert your hook into the top of that 48th linked double crochet and just slip stitch. This secures the loop in place so that we can finish those last two stitches. So you'll just link double crochet like usual where you insert your hook into that crossbar or horizontal bar. And then remember we're link double crocheting into the third loops. Oh, can't get that second yarn piece. All right, here's number 49. And then remember for the 50th one, it'll be a little bit different because we're gonna join it so once we've got our stitch set up, we'll insert our hook into the horizontal bar from the first stitch of that round, and then yarn over and pull through three loops, and then yarn over to finish off. And normally we would do um, that backwards, like slip stitch join, where we take out our hook and we put it through but we're actually gonna trim our yarn. And we'll do an invisible join. So first you're gonna cut enough yarn to join. I usually do about double the length of whatever I'm joining, um, cause we're just gonna use it to sew up this so that these two sides are stuck together at the top. So about double the width of your pot holder will be good. And then just trim it. Pull your hook all the way through. And then we'll invisible join. So put on your tapestry needle. And to invisible join, we're going to imitate what this top stitch looks like. So this little V. So insert your hook into the top of the next stitch, like the second stitch of that round. Pull the yarn through, but not too tight. Because remember, we want to imitate the top of this first stitch. So your yarn should be laying on top of that. And then I insert my hook into the top of the last stitch. I just go straight down the middle. And then again, pull your yarn 
tight but not too tight. And it's a little bit trickier since you have two strands of yarn. So you want to make sure that there's not like one that's more loose than the other. But that looks pretty good. So you can see it just blends in with all the other tops. And then from there, normally we would weave in our ends. Um, but I'm just going to go through these stitches a little tiny bit to get back up to the top. Because I'm actually going to whip stitch the top of this double thick pot holder together so that it's closed. I guess you could leave it open if you wanted to use it more as an oven mitt. Um, but for me, I want it closed because I'm going to be setting hot dishes on this double thick pot holder like on my counter or on my table so that they don't burn. All right, so before I started filming, I tried a few different ways to whip stitch, and I'm going to do it through the third loops. That'll just make sure that the, um, like that knit look kind of ribbing is showing up on the front and the back, and it's not like hidden on the inside of our pot holder. So find your third loops and we can just start whip stitching this all together. It's a little bit tedious, so <laughs> sorry about that. They're inside the pot holder. And they're pretty well in there. <laughs> Oops. Don't try not to do what I did where you get your hanging loops stuck. But if it happens, it's not a big deal. You can just pull it out. So I'm just going into the third loop from the top on one side and then into it from the bottom on the other side and then just pulling all the way through. And you want this to be tight to kind of try to hide some of that join. and to make sure it'll be secure. So just keep stitching until you've seamed the entire top of your double thick pot holder together and then you'll be ready to just weave in your ends and to finish off your project like usual. I would consider this to be the back because it has that you can kind of see where we joined. It's not like super super obvious and I don't think someone who doesn't crochet will notice it too much but just in case we'll use the other side as like the top, like the right side. But then you've got your little hook so you can hang it up. Looks super cute. So like I said before, just finish off joining the top seam and the weave in your ends and you are done with your double thick pot holder. Thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. If you need the free written pattern, it's available on youshouldcraft.com. I've got the link in the description below. Please make sure to follow um, the You Should Craft channel and check out the You Should Craft blog for more free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Thanks!